The second tab that you'll see in our course is the announcements tab. And the announcements tab is how I will communicate with the class. If I have to send out a message to everybody and I want everyone to get it at the same time, I'll use the announcements tab. I'm a big fan of sending out weekly announcements. So at 8 o'clock on Monday morning or whatever the first day of the week is, so like President's Day, we don't have school. I wouldn't send out a message on President's Day, but the, the day after, the Tuesday after, I'll send out a message. I like to send them out at 8 o'clock on the first day of the week, and it will say things like, this is what we're working on this week, and this are the things I think would be difficult, so make sure you pay careful attention to that. Um, if I have grading updates or any updates to give, I'll give them in those weekly announcements. In addition, if there's anything else that I think is really important that I want the entire class to see, I will... Um, I will send it out as a course announcement. So periodically if I hear about a job or scholarships, that's where I'm going to send that to the entire class. And so my expectations for this announcements tab is that every time you log into the class, the first thing that you should do is click on the announcements tab and you should read any new announcements. And so the first day of the class you'll have at least four of what I call the preset announcements that I just carry over from semester to semester. I'm going to go through them briefly here with you, but I believe that you have the ability to read them yourself, so I'm not going to read them word for word to you. I'm going to open them in new tabs so that we can quickly kind of go through them. So the one that I think is the most important is the one that says Getting Started in Art 1280, and you'll see that the videos that I am currently recording are also embedded at the top of this uh, announcement. That's because the announcement gets emailed to your Bruin Mail in addition to being posted on the Announcements tab. And so if somebody was to click on it through their email and not be able to get to Canvas, these videos would walk them through that process. The announcement basically explains what is expected of you throughout the week and if you kind of glance through what's on the screen right now you'll see that it says always click on the announcements tab which is what I'm explaining in the videos. Um, it goes through all the different things and then it will have specific due dates for your semester and so the semester in which I'm recording this you can see where it says what's required this week. Um, the due dates are listed for that semester. Obviously you're not going to look at this and say that I'm taking this in spring 2018 and the first uh, assignment is due August 26 because that's not during your semester. Um, so make sure that you're reading it and taking notes on what's specific to your semester. Uh, one of the things that I get a lot of questions about that I do want to specifically point out is this little note at the bottom. It says, please note three credit courses should be approximately 45 hours of work per credit or nine hours, nine hours of work per week during a traditional full-term academic semester. Um, so that's 15 weeks plus finals. Our semester is a little weird because we have days off some of the weeks, and so we actually run for 16 weeks plus the finals, but we have days off here and there. So the hour designation saying that you should be spending 45 hours per credit, and this is a three credit class, so multiply that times three, which will come out to about nine hours of work per week, is for the average student, and there are going to be some students that only need to spend four hours a week on the coursework, and there are some students that might need 12 but uh, an average student should be about nine hours. I will say that if you do not read the instructions and you try to complete activities without doing what I call the pre-work, it just makes it harder. So as long as you follow along with everything that I tell you every week to do, um, I don't think you should be spending nine hours of, of time each week as long as you're doing everything you're told thoroughly. And so one of the things that happens is people will try to kind of cut corners and they'll say, oh, I know how to do that. I don't need to read that chapter. But there's something in that chapter that was key that, you know, you're in week two and you skip something. And when you get to week six, it makes whatever you have to do during week six harder because now you have to go back to, to what you're supposed to do week two and relearn the material. And then you can do what's required in week six. Um, if you have any questions about the hour designation, let me know. And for those of you on campus, the nine hours still, still, still applies, but it takes into consideration that you're on campus. So if you're taking this as a traditional on-campus lecture lab course, you will meet for about five hours a week. And so you should expect to have about four hours of homework on, I would say, on like a bad week. You don't want to be spending four and five and six hours on homework a week, especially if you have that time in class. Now, if your teacher gives you two hours of lab time and you leave 10 minutes into it, and then you end up having hours of homework, then I think that's kind of on you. And then your your lecture lab, I'm sorry, your, your flipped classroom hybrid, you're only going to meet for half of that time. So you're going to meet for about two and a half hours with your teacher a week. And so all the time between two and a half hours and nine hours, 
at home, that's considered your lab time and your time to do your lectures and anything that you need to do to get done your coursework.